Thank you for joining us on Nationwide, which is coming to you behind schedule. It was due to the live telecast, that is the briefing by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. I am Ifoma Ojinta. Thanks once again for joining us. And uh, let's begin. As at 12.30 p.m., 1st of April, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control confirmed 12 new cases in Nigeria. The report says nine new cases were confirmed in Oshun, two in Edo, and one in Ekiti State, bringing the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 151. In his broadcast to the nation on Sunday, March 29, 2020, President Muhammad Buhari declared that in Nigeria's fight against COVID-19, there is no such thing as overreaction or underreaction. It is all about the right reaction by the right agencies and trained experts. A statement by Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adesino, recalls that a month before the first case of coronavirus in Nigeria, the federal government assured citizens of the country of its readiness to strengthen surveillance at five international airports in the country to prevent the spread of coronavirus. The government announced the airports as Enugu, Lagos, Rivers, Kanu and the FCT. After reporting a first case on February 27, Nigeria's Minister of Health, Dr. Osagi Ehaniri, announced that 60 persons who had contact with the Indes Italian patient were under isolation, 40 in Ogun State and 20 in Lagos State. This was followed on March 9 by the inauguration of a presidential task force for the control of the virus in the country. The task force will later announce that travelers from 13 countries will no longer be allowed to enter Nigeria until the coronavirus pandemic was over. To date, the federal government and relevant agencies continue to demonstrate a high sense of responsibility and awareness which has positioned the country to effectively tackle the menace. To ensure that motorists in Calabar, the Cross River State Capital, comply with the state's government's directive on the number of passengers in a vehicle to prevent people from contracting COVID-19 and possible spread of the disease, the Vehicle Inspection Officers Unit of the Public Transportation Department is driving the enforcement. Chief Vehicle Inspection Officer Paul Beper says the enforcement is necessary if governments must win the war against COVID-19. Achibong Basi reports. It seems like motorists in Calabar are yet to come to terms with the present reality around the world as the novel coronavirus rages. Overloading of vehicles is still a common sight in spite of the directive of government on the specific number of passengers in a vehicle at a time, but the vehicle inspection officers are on top of their game in this regard. On Saturday, it was 3-3. That was while I'm um, still carrying 3. Yeah, I carry, I carry 4, but now I carry 3. Then I carry 2 in the middle, I carry 1 in the front. The awareness is not enough. The federal government is trying their best. These officers are painstakingly educating motorists on the need to comply with the state government's directive. Deputy Chief Vehicle Inspection Officer Stanley Akam says the enforcement has positive results to show. 
Let them make just a short sacrifice for two weeks so that we'll be able to fight this menace that is, that is ravaging the whole world. Beyond checking the number of passengers conveyed by motorists, ensuring drivers have hand sanitizers for their passengers is another task by these officers. We have to sanitize all this, sanitize the door opener, sanitize your steering. Each time you collect money, you sanitize. An observer opines that there must be proper sensitization for transporters and commuters to ensure strict compliance. In Calabar, Achibombasi, NTA News. The Minister of Police Affairs, Mohamed Maigeri Lingiadi, has applauded the enforcement of restriction on movements which took effect in the FCT and Lagos. In a statement, the Minister noted that the directive announced by President Mohamed Buhari in his nationwide broadcast will yield its desired results of breaking the spread of COVID-19 when citizens and residents of the affected states deepen cooperation with the police and other security agencies in enforcing the seats at home directive. He expresses optimism in the efficacy of the collective determination to beat COVID-19 and assured citizens of adequate protection as patrol surveillance and other crime preventive measures will be intensified to ensure safety of lives and property. The minister re-emphasized the need for police officers and other security personnel on enforcement duties to ensure professionalism in the conduct of their assignments, which should also culminate in deep in cooperation from members of the public for the safety of all. In the meantime, while most sections of the federal capital city are observing the lockdown with integrity, there are issues with implementing the other along Mararaba Nyayam Nyanya, motorists on transit to states of the Federation are putting pressure on personnel and forcing the lockdown, even as local population creates their own issues too. Hamis Rogo has a situation report. In the busy area of Ashokoro, the traffic light is urging the traffic to move on. Conspicuously, there is no traffic to move. It is day one of the lockdown of Abuja. And across most parts of the capital city, the compliance is total. But there are peculiar cases. If you really want to appreciate the success of the lockdown of Abuja, you probably need to be where I am. Where I am is the border between Nasarawa State and the Federal Capital Territory. Now why? This is perhaps the busiest section of the FCT. In fact, there are over 10 states across this line. Amoroba, Maradaba, Yenya and all the communities that are around there are probably the most highly populated section of the FCT and they all find livelihood in the FCT. But today, lo and behold, this highly populated area is no longer in this first movement. But then, of course, you cannot stop livelihood. Across the Maradaba area, you find that the financial institutions are working. But then, potentially, what I appreciate most with this area, apart from the success of the lockdown, is the fact that if you are coming in or you are going out, you will have to be scanned. There are dedicated team of scanners who will scan you to see that whether you are carrying the virus or you are not carrying it. Coming to AYA gives you another picture as well. Well, the same picture of compliance. Moreover, AYA is also a business hub. Not less than 100 persons always find life around this area. Today, the place looks like a purgatory. There are no people there. The compliance is almost 80%. Yes, there are pockets of people going, coming in and going out, but then it's anything significant compared to what is actually unfolding here when the days are normal. The lockdown has caught up with a significant number of people on transit, but the expectation generally is that in the next few days, the lockdown would be total and will have greater compliance. In Abuja, Mohamed Hamis Rogo, NT News. Meanwhile, Oshun State begins total lockdown following the increasing rates of COVID-19 cases in the state. Let's join Femi Afari Ogun, who is standing by with the situation report from Oshubo. Thank you, studio. It is the first day of the two weeks lockdown imposed by the Osho State government to contain the spread of coronavirus. This is the major Olaya road in Oshubo, and it is deserted. Shops are also locked as people comply with the restriction of movement. I can confirm that having gone around some parts of the city, 
there is 90% compliance around the state capital. As expected, a number of food vendors are in front of their homes, while pharmacies and first stations are also open to customers. To cushion the effect of the restriction, the state government has set up a 21 panel to ensure that food banks are situated across the state so that people can have access to food during this period. Back to you in the studios. Thank you. Thank you very much, Femi. And um, joining me via the telephone to you know, tell us what the situation is in Ocean State for more is the Commissioner of Health Ocean State, He's Mr. Rafiu Isamutu. Um, can you hear me, Mr. Commissioner? Okay, thank you very much. Now, the data from the Nigerian Center for Disease Control today indicates a total of nine COVID-19 cases in Ocean State. What is the state government doing to curtail the spread of the virus in the state? Thank you very much. Well, uh, I must quickly uh, make one clarification. The, today, as of today, we have um, 14 confirmed cases in Ocean. Okay. And um, out of that, a level of that, we are that of returnees who came from Cote d'Ivoire. So we do not have community transfer in Ocean. So the first case was a man who, who just returned from the UK as well. Okay. As you say, when those uh, people came from Cote d'Ivoire, apparently we we had been informed that they are coming. So we had made a little preparation for them. So basically, when they, they were the Ogosi brothers, the government would have just contacted my boss about them. And it is this belief that majority of people who are in Cote d'Ivoire, in Abidjan, they are from Ijibo, a particular time in Osho. So it is presumed that all of them are from Ijibo. But I must emphasize here that we have uh, people from Edo, Delta, Abia, Benue, and Ambra, among the Oyo and Kwara inclusive. Okay. All of them are from our state. But they are all Nigerian, and it is our duty, you know, to make sure that we do not bring them coronavirus into the state. Okay, okay, Mr. Commissioner, can you tell us what the state is doing to curtail the spread of the virus in the state? Thank you, thank you very much. As of today, there is a total lockdown of our state, which mm. begins today. At the first lockdown, we're going to last for two weeks. Mm. You know, um, before the lockdown, we had closed down all the major market that people can only uh, you know, display their, their wares in front of their houses, especially food items. Mm. No, but as of today, we do not have a total lockdown. We believe if that is the only way, that's the best way to, for us to go. And for anybody that's seen our state, you know, we want to flatten the curve. We do not want them to, if anybody has this, they must stay in their homes. We do, we do not want them to transfer such, uh, we don't want them to transfer COVID-19 to other people. Okay, uh, Mr. Commissioner, what advice do you have for the nation generally on the situation at hand? Well, my advice is that, number one, we must appreciate the fact that COVID-19, coronavirus, is real. Because there are still some folks out there who believe that they are something like a coronavirus. It is real and it is deadly. You know, but at the same time, our people must not panic. Then they should strictly uh, adhere to preventive measures as highlighted by various states and federal government. And what do I mean by that? Our people should ensure that they constantly wash their hands with soap and water. In the absence of that, they can use hand sanitizers, they must maintain social distancing, they should avoid uh, aggregate and complete in one place. You know, by the time we do all this, I believe you know, the country is capable of controlling it. Fe Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Commissioner. That will be all. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Okay. Now, moving on, some of the residents of Kuali Area Council in the Federal Capital Territory have every reason to be thankful during this critical time for Nigeria, not because they are exempted from the COVID-19 pandemic affecting the country, but because some of the beneficiaries have received their four, mo four months payment of the federal government's conditional cash transfer, as directed by President Mohamed Buhari. Ruth Agwele has the details. <laughs> Anxiety, impatience, and a desperate desire to get a hold of their entitlements. 
These are the more than 5,000 beneficiaries in Kuali Area Council in the FCT, waiting to receive their four months conditional cash transfer from the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, as directed by President Muhammad Buhari. Mother of four, Habiba Suleiman, is one of the beneficiaries whose life has changed since being enrolled into the CCT. Just like Habiba, these other beneficiaries are glad with this initiative. For the minister, the immediate implementation of the president's directive is in line with the spirit behind creating a ministry to cater for the needy. We have one million people, over a million across the country, and for the FCT, this particular local government council, uh, we are giving out to about uh, over 5,000 households. Now that we have these restrictions, Mr. President has directed we give two months advance payments. It's not just about the cash alone. It is a cash plus program. We give them money, we also train them on how to be self-sustaining. Similar exercises to be carried out across all the states of the Federation as government quickly moves in to cushion hardships as part of measures taken to cope the spread of COVID-19. In Abuja, Ruth Aguela, NT News. Similarly, 40,000 vulnerable persons from across six local government areas of Nasarawa State are to benefit from the conditional cash transfer as part of efforts to mitigate the COVID-19 impact. Ali Utijani Mohammed reports that the state focal officer for the federal government's social investment program met Governor Abdullah Isuli to discuss implementation. Asaku in Lafia local government area is the take-off point of the disbursement expected to be monitored by local government chairmen and House of Assembly members of the benefiting local councils. The state focal person for social investment program, Imran Ajibrin, says payment will commence immediately in line with the presidential directive to mitigate impact of coronavirus on the economy. We had a discussion with His Excellency on the cash transfer stipend is being paid to the most poor and the most vulnerable in the society by the federal government uh, under the directives of Mr. President Muhammad Buhari. National state government says it will key into the federal government intervention. I want to make sure we use the money completely for, for food and PPEs that will go to the various local government areas. This is the second phase of the conditional cash transfer in Natural State in Lafia. Aliuti Jan Mohamed, NTA News. The body of permanent secretaries headed by the head of service of the Federation has joined the League of Contributors in the efforts to help the federal government contain the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. To this end, the body has donated some items to be used for personal and home hygiene. Anthony Forsen completes the report. The head of service, Dr. Folashade Yemi Esong, during the presentation, said the permanent secretaries contributed a large chunk of their salaries to get the items so that the beneficiaries can maintain optimum hygiene status. She noted that the items were chosen because healthy hygiene is important in the fight against the pandemic. The items to be distributed to the vulnerable in the society include 100 cartons of bath soaps, 100 cartons of the tall antiseptic soaps, 80 cartons of the tall disinfectants, and 100 cartons of aerial and sunshine washing powders. The items have been since handed over to the federal government through the chairman of the COVID-19 Presidential Task Force, Boss Mustafa. The chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 commanded the gesture and commitment of the body in the affairs of government. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Haja Farouk, who took charge of the items, promised that the items will get to the targeted beneficiaries. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News.
and to ensure effective compliance of total lockdown in Lagos, Ogun and the FCT, guests on NTA's program Good Morning Nigeria say there are measures in place to cater for the vulnerable members of the society. This was while discussing the humanitarian perspective of COVID-19 on Good Morning Nigeria. Alika Okpanachi Arua reports. In every disaster situation, Humanitarian advocate says there is need for humanitarian aid. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria maintain that the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, in conjunction with the National Emergency Management NEMA, and other relevant bodies are working together to get relief materials to the less privileged and the vulnerable members in the society, as directed by Mr. President during his address to the nation on Sunday. The proportion, we have a standard where food items about 50 uh, kilograms uh, per month per household of six persons, two husband and wife and four children. It's a partnership thing. Um, Rotary International, as some of you are aware, uh, are, uh, in every nook and cranny you know, of the world. In Nigeria, we have 6,000 volunteers who can be called to action. On the issue of the school feeding program, cash transfer and trader money, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Omar Farouk, says the ministry will liaise with the state governments and traditional rulers on how to get relief materials to the children. Uh, in the event of a total lockdown, uh, we have a plan B and we'll also await for Mr. President's uh, directives. So this is not as if these programs are not ongoing. They, they are there and they are reaching out to all the, the affected uh, populations. They re-emphasize the need for protection of essential workers at all times while advising the public to adhere to the government's directive on the stay-at-home policy and the need to maintain good personal hygiene at all times. In Abuja, Alika Okmanachi Arwa. NC News. This is Nationwide on Nigerian Television Authority. We now join Lagos Studio where Ruth is standing by with more reports. Hello, Ruth. Hello, Ifoma. The total lockdown in Lagos is taking its toll on essential workers who are indispensable due to the unique services they render. Becky Madujemu, who embarked on a drive through major streets of the island axis of Lagos, reports on the huddle the workers have to cross, as well as the level of compliance by the public to the stay-at-home presidential order. The ambience of day two is a lot louder than day one. An objective observer would say the public is testing the waters with the enforcement agents to see just how much they can get away with. Although the roads were not heavy with traffic, there was the conspicuous absence of security operatives many kilometers at a stretch, a contrast from the previous day of lockdown. For mobility, people have taken to the use of their legs. Most are essential workers who have no option than walking to their duty posts. I came from Brada. How did you the, get here? The bus, I, the vehicle, the man that helped me stopped me over down there. So I have to try to get to my office. A few have cleverly made a home at their workplaces. Some are not coming, some are coming. So they have the space to stay at work. For the workers who lack the stamina to trek long distances, begging to hitch a ride from total strangers at the bus stops is a skill they are mastering in a hurry. As for the non-essential workers, the lockdown is a great time for physical fitness and taking leisure walks. A couple of people even involved their pets. There is also that group of persons who leave their homes faffing around for no apparent reason. And it was shocking to find that some still acts like coronavirus is not that serious. But what I know is this, the virus is not made of us, it's made of abroad people, those who went to abroad. Who have been in Nigeria, have not entered places they brought me to abroad. Meanwhile, enforcement was intense in areas like Ikate, Jakonde, and Victoria Island.
Motorists were queried by the security personnel who politely interrupted the journeys of the falters. In addition, the synergy between the police and the military could not be missed as they interrogated people without any form of aggression. In Lagos, Becky Madujemu, NT News. Lagos State's government will cover 80% of the metropolis in its ongoing disinfection exercise during the 14 days lockdown directive of President Muhammad Buhari in order to curb the further spread of coronavirus. Commissioner for Home Affairs, Lagos State, Olarin Waju Elegushi, said the strategy adopted by the government will help tackle developments of None case of new cases. Abolade Salami reports. Index case of COVID-19 in Lagos. The state government has embarked on a series of measures to curb the spread of the virus. Prominent among steps taken is the disinfection exercise of major bus stops, public garden arena, major streets, and highly populated areas. The exercise, which is aimed at protecting lives of the citizenry against contracting the virus will also ensure a cleaner environment. We started this day, even before we started having more figures. So what we believe is a continuous exercise, and we are moving on, we are hope to cover the whole of Lagos. The disinfection exercise with no adverse effect on human health remains one of the means to kill the virus. Because basically what we're using is sodium hypochlorite, which is just like your domestic bleach, you know, just a little bit, uh, a, high, a higher concentration. You know, so it's, you know, everybody uses this in their house. You know? What we can do as custodian of the environment is to take care of all the railings and all of that, as, the, as Mr. Governor has directed. Be an ambassador to tell people that this is the war. We are fighting an invisible enemy, the enemy that does not know the rich, the poor, color, or whatever. And that's why I'm outside. This disinfection exercise continues in Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. And Ifoma, it's back to you in Abuja. Many thanks, Ruth. You're still watching Nationwide. Let's pause for some messages. More reports in a moment. Just stay. Thanks for staying with us. And um, as various states' governments intensify efforts at curbing uh, COVID-19 in their states, we now join our correspondent live in Medjugorje, Memuna Garba, to give us an update on the situation there. Hello, Memuna. Thank you, studio. In Medjugorje, what is the mood like in Medjugorje regarding awareness and um, safety measures among residents? Well, as you can see from the background, Medjugorje is calm with residents going about their legit legitimate activities, but with caution. Activities with caution. There is ongoing sensitization in, all, in almost uh, all quarters, thereby an average person of Meduguri, a resident of Meduguri, he is aware of the coronavirus pandemic because, because of the ongoing sensitization by government, by non-governmental organizations, all in an effort to, to sensitize the people on the dangers of the dreaded virus. Uh, Memuna, what is uh, movement and interactions like among residents? Are they maintaining the social distancing and other uh, preventive measures? Yes. Even though there is free movement in Meduguri, but still they are doing it with a lot of caution. They are observing the social distancing, especially the, by the commercial uh, operators. They have reduced the number of passengers they carry from four, some five to two. All this is a result of the uh, awareness by the government and other agencies in the state, just to ensure that the people maintain, uh, to ensure that the people adhere to all the preventive measures regarding COVID-19. Can you tell us about activities in government and private organizations? Yeah. The government.
government are doing a lot in order to ensure that because right now there is no any case of COVID-19 reported in May, case reported in Meduguri. So the, the government is doing as much as it can to ensure that residents of Meduguri stay safe. Also, other organized, the private sector, like the financial institutions, business points are also adhering to all these measures by ensuring that they place hand washing facilities in all places whereby people use before interacting, before engaging in any interaction. Yes. Thank you very much, Memuna. That will be all. Thanks for the updates. Yes. Yes, already the uh, staff in Borno State have complied with the, with the government directive of stay at home and work, especially uh, civil servants from levels 1 to 12 are um, observing that, are staying at home. Thank you very much, Memuna. That will be all. Thanks for the updates. Now, the lockdown has virtually affected activities in the FCT as people stay at home in compliance with the President's directive. State House correspondent Jide Onifade is at the Presidential Villa to tell us if it is a total lockdown there too. Jide, it's over to you. Thank you, Studio. Well, we cannot all go to bed at the same time. And among those still keeping watch apart from the president is Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo. The office here has always been a beehive of activities. And what the lockdown has done is to slow down human traffic to the office. But the Vice President is still working, leveraging on the power of technology. For his meetings, the Vice President now employs the use of video conferencing. He still monitors what goes on around the country, interacting with state governors to be sure that they are on top of the coronavirus pandemic and that the people are not too burdened by the lockdown. As, as you can see, the, the presidency is still very much open. Uh, and, and of course, the, the vice president is, is working is right now uh, in his office. He has just uh, concluded uh, a video conference call with uh, with about seven governors and the finance minister, the director of budget. Uh, you know about the the special committee on this uh, uh, response to COVID-19 that was set up by the National Economic Council. Uh, so the meeting was conducted uh, through video conferencing, and, and that is how uh, quite a lot of his activities, uh, you know, are being conducted in the light of, uh, of what is happening in the country. So yes, uh, the vice president is still very busy, holding an effort to ensure that Nigerians uh, are properly taken care of, and that the, the, the directives of the president to ensure that all the implications of uh, the shutdown are being uh, properly taken care of, uh, palliative are in place, how to get it done, how to reposition the economy. So there's a lot of work to be done and uh, as you know, uh, the Vice President uh, manages to keep busy every time. Remember that the President just instituted an Economic Sustainability Committee which the Vice President is heading. Meetings are still held using video conferencing. Well, the coronavirus may be slowing things down, but not the will of the people who are committed uh, towards moving the country forward. Back to you in the studio. Thank you very much, GD. Now, Hamisu Rogo again today visited the Maraba Nyanya Axis for an update or to monitor the compliance with the lockdown along that axis. Um, Hamisu, what is the latest? I'm back in the familiar territory. I am back in Maradabaya Nya. Now, let me show you. Did you see this landmark? That is the division between Maradaba and Nya. One is not implementing the lockdown. That is Maradaba. So it's a restless city with the people going along with their businesses, everyday businesses. On the other side, if you come in like I am now, it's Nya, which is in the federal capital city, and which is implementing the lockdown. Now, this place is interesting as far as the story of the lockdown is concerned because of their value in anarchy, because of their value in chaos. Now, many people coming from this axis, because like I told you, in this place, more than 10 states are connected. And then it is a highly densely populated area because most of the suburbs of Abuja are around this axis. 
So it is a restless place where people are always on continuous motion to conquer nature to their advantage, to find something to support their livelihood. So in that respect, you find that there is high volume of traffic on a continuous basis. But then, or oh, probably, that is the scenario that is playing out here. If you go out there, you will find that there are over 1,000 vehicles, all wanting to go into the federal capital city despite the lockdown. And then they are being effectively stopped by the security agencies that are marshaled around all in that area. No movement. The mantra is total lockdown. But then it is like the people do not understand what that means. Or even if they do, it doesn't make any effect of them. Their interest is to be allowed to go into the federal capital city. And the security agencies are saying that there is a total lockdown, you are not going. That is the stalemate. That is the crisis in motion. And that is the anarchy I have been speaking about. How do you break the deadlock? How do you break the stalemate? That is the issue in this place. Under scorching sunshine, you are waiting to go to Abuja and you are stopped. Don't you know the lockdown in Abuja? Yeah, I'm aware of it. Yes, speak louder, lock please, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'm aware of it, that the lockdown, but the reason that bring me out is serious reason. So, I I can't stay, then the reason is not going to be solved. I know. So, I, what happens? I went to buy some food items at Marva. I am on my way to FCT, but it's not easy to pass through. So, but, you, you, know it's, you know it's easy. Why did you go, sir? But they made mention of essential commodity, essential services. That if you are in going to hospital, food, petroleum, security agencies should allow you to move. It is a very testy atmosphere here. Stand-up is not uncommon. Often between individuals who come to claim essential service engagement, but with no credible paper or credible story. On the route going to Abuja, however, traffic is unimpeded. Motorists and pedestrians are stopped only to have their temperature taken. Generally, there is a joint operation of various services on the Maradaba Yenya axis to implement compliance with the lockdown in Abuja. Mohamed Hamis Rogo, NTA News. Thank you very much, Hamisu. In the meantime, President Mohamed Buhari has approved the release of 70,000 metric tons of grains for the National Reserve for distribution to the poor and vulnerable. The Secretary to the Federal Government said this during the daily briefing by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. President Buhari has approved exemption of seaport workers from the lockdown in affected states, noting that exemption of an agency does not cover all staff, but strictly the the essential staff. The Presidential Task Force has also developed an implementation guidelines and protocols for the COVID-19 lockdown policy document to be widely circulated to all security agencies. However, the Minister of Health gave updates on COVID-19 as, as at 1st April. He emphasized the adherence to the safety order, which include regular hand wash with soap and water, use of alcohol-based sanitizer, maintenance of two-meter social distance, among others. And the federal government has further demonstrated its commitment to ameliorate challenges occasioned by the ravaging coronavirus pandemic with the suspension of the new electricity tariff regime. A statement signed by the Minister of Power, Sally Maman, states that the three-month delay in the implementation of tariff measures is in line with the presidential directive to grant a moratorium for certain federal government funded facilities to the Nigerian public. The review of the electricity tariff was earlier scheduled to take effect from 1st of April 2020 but is now suspended till 30th of June 2020 to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 on electricity customers. Other interventions include the collaboration with the Central Bank to, of Nigeria to ensure payments to the generators and gas suppliers through the payment assurance facility to support power supply at this critical time, while Transmission Company of Nigeria is creating emergency measures to ensure staff will be available to monitor the grid and perform technical interventions. In line with the government's approval for a monthly review of premium motor spirits, pump price, petroleum products pricing regulatory agency, PPPRA has announced a PMS 
pump price of 123 naira 50 kobo per litre. The price, which becomes effective 1st April 2020, shall apply at all retail outlets nationwide for the month of April 2020. A statement signed by Abdul Kadri Saidu, Executive Secretary, PPPRA, and other relevant regulatory agencies shall continue to monitor compliance. Affairs Division, Dr. Kenny Obateru says the exemption granted by the president of to certain categories of essential workers covers the operations of petroleum product tankers drivers. The release further says the federal government counts on the support of the law enforcement agencies across the country to ensure smooth distribution of petroleum products across the nook and cranny of the country during the period of the restriction. NMPC confirms that it has over 2.6 billion litres of petrol, enough to last the period of the lockdown and beyond, and advised that motorists should not engage in panic buying. Now, in the face of measures taken against the spread of COVID-19, Borno State Government says it will not hesitate to revoke certificates of ownership of land granted to filling stations in the habit of hoarding petroleum products and those hiking prices of the products. Governor Babagana Umar, Umar Zulum handed down the warning when, the, when he visited some filling stations in Medjugorje following reports of fuel scarcity in the wake of restrictions of movements as part of preventive measures against COVID-19. Mohamed Goni reports. As soon as the federal and state authorities announced preventive measures against the coronavirus pandemic, some marketers were reported to have taken advantage of the situation to either hold petroleum products or sell them at exorbitant prices to the public. Governor Babagana Omar who visited over 10 filling stations in the metropolis and environs, personally evaluated volumes of commodities in each station visited. All petroleum dealers should desist from such nefarious activities and ensure that they sell petroleum products as and when do. Interacting with officials of the filling stations, Governor Babagana Omar directed immediate resumption of sales of PMS at the official prices and also called on the DPPR to close down some filling stations found wanting. The governor also used the opportunity to call on other marketers in the state who are taking advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic to hike prices of food items to deceased or face the wrath of government. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. Now more reports from Sokoto and Sadia will be a guide. Over to you, Sadia. Although no case of COVID-19 is recorded in Sokoto, the State Ministry of Health has continued to intensify efforts towards curtailing the spread of the viral infection. This came to the fore at a, at a, at a briefing. Musa Wakar reports. For Sokoto State, like everywhere in the world, COVID-19 continued to take center stage. <laughs> The task force committee on the deadly virus has reconvened again to review the measures taken and brief newsmen on its activities. This includes observing and tracking of returnees. Yes, there was a case that was reported uh, from Borain General Hospital. Uh, a 32-year-old person that is suspected to have this problem will arrive this tonight. Immediately we went there this tonight. I will find that the case does not meet the case definition. Uh, it's, it's somebody that has come back from Lagos four days ago and he has uh, shortness of breath, uh, or even fever, except shortness of breath. The measure will discover that there is a case of heart fever. Over 29 million naira have so far been realized from donors to support the fight against COVID-19 in the state. In Sokwato, I am Musa Abubakar, NTA News.
Zamfara State Command of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps has mobilized 250 personnel to respond to emergency situations in an effort to prevent spread of COVID-19 in the state. Halru Muhammad Umar reports. Providing necessary warning for the civilian population in times of danger is one of the core mandates of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps as contained in the Corps Act No. 6 of 2007. This prompted the NSCDC Commandant General in collaboration with the National Center for Disease Control to organize a training for the personnel of the Corps on the role they are expected to play in the ongoing effort to prevent and control the spread of COVID-19 in the country. In Zamfara State, 250 personnel underwent the training where they were enlightened on preventive and safety measures to enable them to discharge the humanitarian task effectively. For people that have traveled to countries that have this um, coronavirus outbreak and they are back to Nigeria, please and um, please, we are encouraging them to self-isolate. Several measures above the federal state level were put in place to ensure public safety in Nigeria. It is in view of this, we see it necessary to ensure enforcement of this order. The forum also provided an opportunity for men and officers of the command to ask questions and make comments on issues related to the COVID-19 and the various measures taken to prevent and control the pandemic. In Gusau, Halir Muhammad Umar, NTA News. Nationwide news will continue in Abuja right after this break. Continue. You're welcome back. The National Youth Service Corps says its orientation camps across the country are ready for use as isolation centers as the nation continues to combat the spread of coronavirus pandemic. Director General NYSC Brigadier General Shuaibu Ibrahim said this in Abuja during an inspection of camp facilities at NYSC Kubwa. Walayanka Ojo reports. Due to the ravaging global effect of coronavirus, the NYSC on the 18th of March suspended its three weeks orientation course eight days after it commenced. A decision that got a nod from most youth core members. It's for our safety because we are meant to believe that safety comes first no matter what. The, the move that the government does take now, it is right for them to leave us to leave the camp. With the gradual increase in the number of infected cases of coronavirus in Nigeria, the Director General, NYSC, Brigadier General Shoebu Ibrahim, inspected some structures at the NYSC FCT orientation camp in readiness for use as an isolation center to fight the pandemic. It's an indication of the government concern for the welfare of Nigerians. And if NYSC camps are made available, we will have to comply and be on standby to that effect. And that's why I came to FCT camp to check the, uh, the readiness of the count. On the lockdown order by the federal government, the DGNYC says... The government should be very careful. They should adhere strictly to government directives and also uh, monitor our social, our social media. While retreating, the scheme's commitment was ensuring the welfare, safety and security of youth core members. The NYC boss says before any orientation takes place in any camp, it will be fumigated. Online Kaoju. NTA News. Mina in Enugu Studio will bring us details of happenings from that zone. Hello, Ifoma. Good afternoon and welcome to Enugu. In view of the need for total compliance with the efforts of government towards containing the spread of coronavirus in the country, traditional rulers in Imo State have expressed commitment towards ensuring that rural dwellers abide by the preventive measures. Chuku BK Chuku visited some communities in the state and now reports. A visit to some rural communities in Imo State shows that rural dwellers are observing the measures identified by experts as best in containing the spread of coronavirus in the areas. Some of the traditional rulers who commended the efforts of government at federal and state levels noted that they disseminated information on COVID-19 to rural dwellers and intimated them on the dangers of non-compliance. Followed the government instruction not to gather more than 30 people at the same time. And uh, the distance, the space between one another should be about uh, two meters. Government and uh, medical experts have given us measures 
rules and the things to observe. We will do our best to observe them. Some of the people, while lamenting the hardship associated with the shutdown of economic activities, appealed for government intervention. The wave, we show by the grace of God, it will also pass through without doing much damage that is doing in Italy and Spain. Business is down, customers are no longer coming. No customers, and things are very expensive. We can't even buy things. We can't even over there where we do buy things to this place. We can't, we can't buy, and even the ones we bought, we do sell for them. In a higher rate. From the steps so far taken since the virus was brought into the country by the index case, it is evident that government has continued to make relentless efforts to control the disease. In Oware, Chugu Bigechugu, NTA News. Markets and non essential businesses in Enugu have been shut down in compliance with the state government's directive against the spread of coronavirus. Jude Abugu visited major markets in Enugu Metropolis and now reports. With the exemption of these traders who sell essential commodities like foodstuffs, beverages, medicine and food vendors, other businesses and shops in some major markets in the state remained closed in strict adherence to the market shutdown directive which took effect from the evening of Tuesday, 31st March. At the popular timber market, Owani, the usual presence of articulated vehicles and trucks were not seen. It is a very well-organized market. Uh, uh, it doesn't take us anything. Once we give an instruction, it emanates from the authority of the market. Everybody must comply. The full staff sessions at Obete main market, Akwata and Kaeta markets had few traders and buyers who were also observing the regular hand washing with soap directive. Some of them who spoke to NTA News crew commended the state government for the measures being put in place to prevent the spread of the virus. It's very, very important that they share the relief packages, particularly to the people who are very poor. They complied at least 80%, so by tomorrow we'll continue. Some security agents and market leaders were also seen in the market enforcing the directive. In Enugu, Jude Abugu, NTA News. That's a bit from Enugu. It's back to you for more for continuation of Nation World. Thank you, Mina. Now, the Joint Health Sector Unions, JOHESU, and Assembly of Healthcare Professionals have called on all health workers across Nigeria to support governments, both federal and states, in curtailing the spread of coronavirus pandemic. National Chairman of JOHESU, Joy Josiah, while commending President Muhammad Buhari for an instructive broadcast on COVID-19, on the inclusion of our members and the implementation of the various economic stimulus measures, interventions and palliatives mentioned in the speech to motivate health professionals and staff. Joheso thanks its members in their courageous efforts, especially those at border entry points, emergency units, ICU, and in various isolation centers for their resilience and commitment to combat the dreaded COVID-19 menace, while reminding government at all levels to provide needed protective items to health workers to prevent agitation. The unions charge members to actively participate in all task force committees and urge the inclusion of members in the various COVID-19 task force and committees by both federal and state governments in combating the pandemic. Now we take you to Benin for more reports. Ubehi will be our guide. It's over to you. Thank you, Foreman. Welcome to Benin. It is business as usual in Benin as residents go against government's stay-at-home directive a measure initiated to fight the spread of coronavirus pandemic. Iforma Okafo reports on the level of compliance in the city. As the novel coronavirus spreads and in the absence of a vaccine, social distancing practice thereby becomes imperative. Aware of this, the government has since directed citizens to distance themselves to curb spread. Benin, the Edo state capital, is yet to fully comply with the directive. The directive by the government that everybody should be at home, except for the essential needs, in order to curb the spread of the COVID-19, seem not to be working here at Oba Market, as though the shops are all closed, but the people refuse to go home. I pay up to 300000 in a year for the shop. 
every month we pay like B3000. Now the government said we should lock the shop. So I don't know how we'll cope about this. No, no, we don't have money. We don't have anything to accommodate. Now you say you, you people should go home, go home. To go and do what? If you want me to stay at home, you must ensure that my welfare, my well-being is taken care of. What is happening today in the country, in the whole world, is as a result of the fact that humanity have turned their back on God. And the cure to the problem that the world is facing today is repentance. People are advised to comply with directive in order to stop the spread of COVID-19 in the states. In Benin, Ifoma Okafo, NTA News. It is a few days into the boundary closure in Delta State. Correspondent Austin Edemodu reports that the enforcement of the directive at the Niger Bridgehead seems to be given security agents and authorities cause for concern in the wake of total disobedience by travelers. As it was on the first day of the enforcement of the border closure in Delta State, so it is on the second day. Articulated vehicles and commuter buses stretched across the Asaba Onisha Highway, waiting for their turns to pass, having spent days on the road. It's three days now that is hot up. Because if we don't go to here, if we die for hungry, now we say the virus don't catch us pass the way we would talk. Suddenly, the vehicles are having their way once again, an indication that the enforcement of the border closure does not hold water as expected. And because of we carry this peri uh, perishable. Can egg. Now, you make, now you make them allow us. Bus drivers and commercial motorcyclists are having busy time as they make last minute trips at the expense of the commuters ahead of the total 14 day shutdown starting from Wednesday this week. If they want us to stay like that, they have to make a provision for us. They should please consider us if they can adjust the strike to one week. I pray for God to help Nigeria at least some few weeks. That will be news that that sickness have gone. For now, the total border shutdown in Delta State seems not to be working, and only time shall tell when there will be total compliance. I'm Austin, a demo of NTA News. And that's it from Benin. Nationwide continues with Ifoma in Abuja. Yeah. Now in keeping with its strategy of disinfecting and decontaminating high-risk areas of the country against COVID-19 spread, the Federal Ministry of Environment has co-opted personnel of the Federal Fire Service into the exercise on Nange Fine Phase reports that training for firemen was part of the official flag off of the decontamination exercise. As part of measures to contain further spread of COVID-19, the federal government is decontaminating and disinfecting high-risk areas across the country. The exercise is carried out by the Department of Pollution Control and Environmental Health of the Ministry of Environment, as well as Environmental Health Officers. This chemical is not a new chemical. It has been used in decontamination even in our hospitals, our health facilities, and it is also applicable in the isolation camps and in the quarantine station. Now to optimize the impact of the exercise, personnel of the Federal Fire Service are being trained to also carry out the contamination against COVID-19. So we are calling on all the people to stay away. Anywhere you see fumigation going on, the contamination, please keep your distance. Uh, chemicals have a lifespan. After fumigation, after a number of either hours or days, uh, the potency has gone way down not be that harmful. We are collaborating with the Minister of Environment. They are giving us the PPE, which is personal protective equipment. They are giving us the chemical. Our own, we have our fire trucks. Each of these trucks carries 6,000 liters of water, and it has three discard outlets. So far, some federal parastators, including the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA National Headquarters in Abuja, have been decontaminated. The exercise will extend to schools, to markets and other densely populated areas in the country. In Abuja, Onengiye, Fine Face, and News. And now, sports updates. And that concludes Nationwide. We thank you for watching. Please do stay safe. Bye for now.